You were making tracksuits as a kid. I know that. <laughs> Did you? Was there a design thing that you thought, "Oh, this is this is sort of the thing that I really love to do"? Like Lauren used to tell me that she used to make dolls houses. I was very surprised to hear, like, because yeah. there's no there's no record of it. There's no photos of her with no. it. But that was one of her things as a kid. Yeah, absolutely. Like jewelry making, I used to really love in high school. All right, and used to even sell some of it and would just make big earrings and then sell it and. Like it, to me, it was just fun. Um, when I was younger, Barbie's clothes okay. was a thing. My sister um, Stephanie, who I've got um, three siblings, she's the one after me. She was more into Barbies than me, and very much sort of the typical f- princess. So she'd make me, you know, make Barbie clothes with her on the weekend, so that she could dress up all her Barbies. <laughs> um, and then, like I mentioned, yeah, Mum made me make my own tracksuit pants, which was terrifying. Um, <laughs> But I think at the time I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I definitely wasn't like, this is what I'm going to do. Otherwise, I would have probably had a much more um, direct path to fashion. But I was always interested in it and always Mm. interested in the different fabrics and how you would piece together a garment and, you know, what the machine could do and how you could use it, utilise it in different ways. And then watching mum with her sports brand build that and, and... have all the clothes there and I found it fascinating that she could, you know, come up with an idea and then watching that transition into Mm. an actual garment was – I really enjoyed that and that's when I went through my wedding dress process, that's where the fascination picked up again of like, wow, this is incredible. I've seen a sketch and now – and then it's gone into calico and the steps and then just that magic kind of evolving. Mm Mm-hmm. This reminds me of how, like, if I go to Dad's print factory, I love smelling the paper. Yeah. Do you have? Did you have a thing like that? Seeing your, did your mum have like a factory, or did she do it from home? She or? did a lot of it from home, but we used to go to the factories in Collingwood because she used uh-huh. to. That's where she would have it produced. So I remember always like going through all the racks and seeing all the machines and just <laughs> sort of you know subconsciously taking it all in, but not being particularly interested because you never want. Oh, I didn't want to do what my parents did. You know, you, you don't want to fall Isn't in that, that trap. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do what you're going to do. And then, you know, here we are. <laughs> do, you, do you find that more and more as you get older, you realise that more and more you're like your parents, like a perfect meshing of your parents? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's, you know, sometimes words come out of my mouth and I will even say, or my sister, I, I work with my brother and my sisters and they'll be like, that's mum. <laughs> and, it, and it terrifies me, you know, that <gasps> I can't believe I just said that. Um, <laughs> because I do <laughs> a think- wonderful woman, but yeah, you know, you you don't think that you are going to turn, especially with parenting. I have a six year old daughter, yeah, and so a lot of you know the sort of values I guess we're trying to instill in her, or when we're telling her off, or you know, disciplining her. That's literally my parents coming out of my mouth. <laughs> uh-huh. Have you? Do you think there's like anything in the business that transitioned? No, you would have started the business before you had your daughter. So it started 2011. It's now 2019. Yes. She's six. It would have been two years into two it. Two years in, which was um, Willa, love her, but she was a definite surprise. Um, <laughs> I actually didn't find out until I was 11 weeks pregnant oh, that wow, I was okay. pregnant. I was just not very in tune with myself and also just running the business and kind of in that really small stage of small business where I was doing everything. So from the inquiries to... Um, the fittings to the consultations, the designing, the, you know, bookkeeping, ev- invoicing, everything was, and the production schedules, everything was being run by me at that stage uh-huh. and couldn't work out while I was getting these headaches. And then a client actually said to me, have you thought that maybe you're pregnant? And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> and then went straight to the chemist. <laughs> and lo and behold, I was, and that you know, in some ways I'm really grateful it was a shock, but in hindsight now it really made me put some processes in place then. Yeah. Um, it was very, it was highly stressful on so many different levels, especially once I had Willa. Um, she, I, within the week I was back 
at work. Oh my God, are you um, serious? Yeah, I bought my on the way home from hospital. I stopped to see a client because I really mucked this girl around, um, oh and she was a bride. God. Brides, you can't muck around brides. <laughs> and so I stopped, and I had an emergency Caesar, so I was quite sore, so I couldn't sort of stand up. So my mum came with me, and I held Willa as a, a newborn on the way home from hospital, and mum helped me put the gowns on her while I directed from sitting on the floor. Oh, Kaya, fucking um, hell. So <laughs> challenges like that and then just little things like I was breastfeeding her and then having clients, I didn't feel comfortable feeding her in front of clients. So, and I was still getting used to when you would feed her and when you wouldn't feed her. And so I'd be to clients, I couldn't really give them a set time, which girls want set, anybody wants a set time for an appointment. But yeah. I was like, oh, I'm actually running an hour late. I'm not sure because I don't know when she's going to stop feeding and I don't know if she's going to go to sleep and... <sighs> I would sit in my car and feed because the studio wasn't big enough at that stage for, you know, multiple people to be in there. It was very small. So I look back on that time and it was extremely stressful and I would never do it the same again. But it did teach me a lot and it did make me put things in place so that other people... It taught me how to lose control a bit mm. and how that's not such a bad thing and that if you teach people right, they can actually step in and help you and, and excel. But it was very scary at the time. And I've had this conversation with Lauren, like what happens if – because the great thing about having your own business is the flexibility, right? So you, can, you can have a child quite easy. And this is something my auntie has spoken to us about because she mm. ran her business when she had her kids and – you can do both, but you've got to have things in place that prevent you from having a nervous breakdown. And so if you were to look back on that time and you were, you were to say to the Laurens of the world who in the next two years are probably going to have a kid, maybe they're running a business already, what what are some of the most crucial aspects or things that they can look at now? I th- you know, I think setting yourself up well before the baby arrives. Yeah. So having someone that you've hand over you know, your role to that understands the business, understands. And if, you know, not every business can afford that either. So is it even just on a part-time or a contract capacity yeah. where they can come in and just relieve that pressure off you? Because it is, you know, as a new mum, you're so, it's so daunting. It's so new. You're tired. You actually, you know, in some ways you switch off to the business, which I never, ever thought I would. Yeah. Um, but I it doesn't become that. your priority anymore. Where And, you know, that is your baby and then all of a sudden you're like, no, but I've got a human that (laughs) needs me first. Yeah. And I think that's what I was quite shocked at is that, you know, the business I loved and I lived and I breathed it, but I, like, I just, it didn't even come into my mind some days because I was just too consumed with trying to work out how to be a mum, you know, how to get the, all the washing done, what food I needed to prepare, even just for myself, how to get a shower in during the day, you know, how to, if I had to go to work during the day, Willa hated the car, so could I time it so that she could sleep so then I wouldn't build my own anxiety up while she was driving and screaming all the way to work and then walking in like red-faced, flushed, stressed on a higher level of energy. Wow. So just... I think having someone that you can rely on to back you up and maybe relieve some of your day-to-day stuff. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So it sounds like it made you a better entrepreneur. Absolutely. In hindsight, at the time though, I would never wish that upon my worst nightmare (laughs) because, and I'm, you know, I'm, as a person, I'm very much an ideas person and, and love looking at strategy and, and bigger and better ideas and how can we do things differently and, you know, what are we not doing well enough? But when it comes down to detail, I'm not that person. Yeah. And it wasn't until after that whole experience I realised, no, that's where I need to hire in and get get a bookkeeper that loves looking at spreadsheets. I couldn't think of anything worse. (laughs) So, you know, let's get a bookkeeper that loves reconciling accounts and working out how to save money and how to, you know, run the accounts better or the invoicing in a better way. And for me at the time I hadn't identified that, but moving forward, it's definitely that's in the business in general is if I'm not good at it, get someone in that is 